In this video, I'm going to give you a quick high-level overview of the developer tools in the Mozilla Firefox browser. The tools in Firefox have expanded dramatically in the past couple of years, and there's a lot here. So this will be kind of a whirlwind tour. I'm going to be using this simple HTML file, which just has a heading and a paragraph with an ID main content and a little bit of style for the heading. So I'm going to start by loading in my file. Then to get started with the developer tools, go to Tools, Web Developer, and Toggle Tools. You'll see the developer tools appear at the bottom of your browser window. Let's start at the left-hand side. Go ahead and click on the Inspector tab if it's not already selected. This tab shows you the elements in the document object model that the browser has created based on your HTML. This should look like your HTML, and you can see here that it does. But what you're seeing is not just the text from your HTML file, but rather the element objects that the DOM has created when it loaded your page. You can see here there's a pointer tool at the top left of the developer console, and this allows you to select elements from your page to inspect. So I'm going to click that and then mouse over the elements in my page, or rather the content that I see that's made from the elements in my page. And as I mouse over each of these pieces of content, you can see which element is creating that content. So in this case, it's the H1 element. And you can see what size the element is. And if I select that, you can see that down here in the inspector window, that the H1 element that is creating this content is also selected. So this tool lets you see which element created which content in the page. And if you're searching for an element based on the content you see on the page, this is a quick way to find it. I selected the heading in the page, which corresponds to the H1 element in the HTML. Notice just above the window here, you can see the nesting of the element you select. So I can see that the H1 element is nested in the body, which is nested in the HTML. And as I mouse over these elements, you can see them highlighted in the page. On the right hand side, you can see the style for the H1 element that's selected. So this rules tab, as well as the computed tab, is going to show you the style for the page. And the rules tab is what shows you the style that you have created and added to your page. Another very useful tab in this section of the window is the box model tab. This will show you the CSS box that's created for the element you've selected. That is the content, the padding, the border, and the margin. This is a great way to debug if you have any layout or sizing issues in your page. Okay, let's go back over here and the next tab is the console tab. This is where you can interact with your page via JavaScript. So you can type JavaScript code down here at the prompt, so I can add a variable. And I can use JavaScript here to manipulate and interact with the content in the page. These tabs up here just let me filter what kinds of errors I'm going to see in the console tab. The debugger tab is where you can debug your JavaScript code. I'll do a separate video on how to use the debugger in browsers later. This is a really useful tab, uh, especially if you've got a lot of JavaScript code in your page and you've got some problems. The style editor tab is a really nice feature of Firefox. This opens your CSS into a separate editable window, so I can easily add an experiment with CSS for my page. So for instance, I can add a whole new rule here and let's add a rule for the P element. And you can see that as I do so, it goes ahead and applies that style to the page so I can see that my paragraph is now the color red. If you add a lot of CSS to your page using the style editor and you want to save it, you can just click on this save button here and it will allow you to save out your CSS into a separate file. The performance tab is where you can record and then analyze the time spent in your code. And I don't have any code in my page, but I'll start recording anyway, so you can get a sense of what it looks like. These are all functions that are happening internal to the browser and they're not related to my code at all. But there's a really nice menu option here that allows you to select the kinds of functions that you want to be able to analyze and turn them on and off if you're not interested, say, in garbage collection or CC graph reduction, which is uh, the process that the browser used to, uses to draw the elements in your page. You can select the time period that you want to focus on, and it'll blow it up just a little bit. 
and it'll blow it up so that you can look at the details in the window down here. The network tab is where you can see how long it took to load the assets in your page, including the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, images, and other media. You can also see how big the various assets are in your page. So if you have a huge asset that's taking a long time to load, this is where you can identify that and determine if it's a problem. Okay, that's it for the tabs. Let's take a look at the icons over here on the right hand side of the window. This first icon here allows you to look at the individual frames on a page. So if your page has a, an iframe displaying content from another source, you can load and inspect that content here. In my case, I don't have any iframes on the page, so I don't see any other frames as an option on this menu. The next item is for a quick console. Notice that I'm still in the network tab, and if I click on the quick console, it brings up a console window below the network tab so that I can interact with JavaScript down here and see that in this window and then see network results or, or do that with the inspector or the debugger and so on. The next tab is for responsive design mode. So if I click this, I get into a mode where I can test my pages using devices with different screen sizes. So for instance, here I'm seeing the page as it would look like on a 320 by 480 screen, like you'd see on an, on an old iPhone. You can change the size of the page you want to test using this menu up here. To make that go away, you just click that button again to go back into normal mode. The next icon here is the developer tool preferences. This allows you to add yet more tabs and icons for tools to your developer toolbar. For instance, I can click the storage button here or the storage option here, and you'll see that I've got a new storage tab, which allows me to inspect local storage, web storage, and cookies in my browser. As you can see, there are lots of options here. One of my favorite tools is the eyedropper tool, which allows you to grab a color from the page. So if you select grab a color from the page, you'll see this little eyedropper tool appear. If you click that, you can then mouse over parts of your page and select a color. Now I don't have too many colors here. I've just got black and white, but if I select that, notice that it's going to copy the hex value pound sign 000000, 000, 000, 000 into my copy and paste buffer. Now, if I want to paste that, say, into a file, I can do that very easily. This is very handy when you're designing the cover style for your page. Finally, there are two icons that allow you to change where the developer console appears in the page. Click this icon if you want it to appear over to the right side of the page, and click this one if you want it to pop out entirely into a separate window. To get the console back into the page, just click one of these icons again to bring it back. And to close the console altogether, just click this little X at the top right. There's a lot here, and even a few features are available in the Web Developer menu that we didn't cover at all. But I'll stop here and delve into these features in another video.